afternoon, everybody. This is Osiris with Onk Entertainment, Stones in the Color of Her Blog, and 15 Minutes, the show. Guess what? I am live in Hollywood, West Hollywood, Los Angeles to some, and we are in front of one of my favorite interviewers, interviewees, Miss Jennifer Lightham. Hey, Jennifer. Hello, Osiris. How are you doing? I'm doing well. So this is two years later. I remember I interviewed you two years ago, I think. Yeah. And we were talking about your album and all this thing. What happened? What has happened since last we spoke? I'm trying to remember which album we were promoting back uh, then. I think it was left. Know. Might have been Left Coast Story. It was Left Coast Story. That was the mm. one. Ah. So what are we doing now? What's been going on since I've seen you last? Well, um, I've put out a few more records since then. I have a okay. live DVD that came out and, and most recently, um, last year, I put out a Christmas record, Future Christmas, a holiday record. Wow. And that did very well. It was the number one selling holiday record on CD Baby for about three weeks last wow. year during the Christmas season. And then I, I, I also released a new record um, over the summer called Mood Swings. Oh, it's, um, that leads me to my second question. my newest mood one. Mm -hmm. Why did you name it Mood Swings? Uh, I like that it's called Mood Swings. The, the album's a tribute to my sister. My sister passed away in March as I was doing the post-production on Mood Swings. And then um, she was um, um, she was afflicted with bipolar disorder. Oh, poor baby. And um, had a really rough go of it with that. Um, it was She had a pretty amazing life considering all that she had to deal with. And as I was uh, mixing Mood Swings, uh, I got a call and, and she had been found and my cousin had found her and she'd passed away. Hmm. So I took care of everything. We, I kind of suspended uh, working on the record for a little while. And, and um, when I went back to, to re resume the mixing, it was um, apparent to me that the, the, the programming that I had chosen for this record was mimicking my sister's... Um, Passing. Wild mood swings from the manic oh. to the depressive, and and um, I I decided to to change the order of the record to reflect that, so that each tune is is a completely opposite mood from the one before it. Oh, so awesome. when you listen to the record from beginning to end, it's like high low, high low. So that kind of it's, down. yeah. So wow, it, and hence I call amazing. it I call it mood swings. Now it's not just mood swings; it's mood with the s in the in the parentheses. And then wings, mood s wings. So it could be moods wings, it could be mood swings like swinging jazz. It could you know it could be a lot of different things, a lot of entendre there. That's kind of hip. I kind of like that. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's the the emphasis for that record, and and it's it's done remarkably well. I'm I'm really proud of this record and the response it's getting. Well, we can't wait to hear it, and I know you're going to show it, show us the jacket yeah. know, to see, so we can see that mood springs. Let me see if I can get a close-up on that. Raul Vega did the picture. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Isn't it nice? Let me see if I can get it. There it is, folks, <laughs> mood swings. It's amazing. Wow, that's really nice. Thank you. So, so the, the, let's, let's get into another question. Now, I know you um, are aware of Caitlyn Jenner. And I know that I've asked this question to a few more people. Is Caitlyn friend or foe of the community, of the LGBTQ community? Mm. Has she really affected anything in the community by coming out and by all the press and everything? Or is the community still uh, at a loss for development, so to speak, at a loss for fitting, you know, just accepting people for the way they are without having any labels at all? What, what, what's your thought on that? Well, Caitlyn Jenner certainly is a, a very visible transgender person now. She's wide out there, and she's gone. She um, certainly, in the the media wave that she's been riding, it it's it's brought a lot of attention to the transgender subject. So more people are talking about being transgender than ever before. So that, in that essence, I think it's a good thing. Uh, I think she's a good thing as far as that goes. Um, uh, you know, there's some. Everybody is completely unique, you know, and, and you can't really, you know, by saying something about Caitlyn Jenner, you can't really paint the whole community one Absolutely. way or another. Yeah. Um, I, I personally was a little bit taken aback with her um, objectifying herself as her first way of, of 
Um, Exp expressing. Yeah, the, the Vanity Fair cover, like posing in your underwear for your very first public thing, to me that was a little weird. It, 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 you know, a lot of transgender people dislike being objectified. And yeah. she was objectifying herself, so, so I I disagreed with her fashion choices. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm not a big fan of reality television. I must tell you, it's one of, the, in my opinion, one of the lower entertainment forms there Absolutely. is, and it's, it's not something I ever watch. And and yeah. okay, so I guess Caitlin is educating a whole bunch of people that I would never reach, you know, in what I do. Um, so you know, I think it's you know, all in all, it's a good thing and. I don't know. I, I kind of got to back you up on that one. Now, you said you'll never reach. Now, you are not just a musician. You are a famous musician. <laughs> you are in the jazz world. Now, maybe if jazz had a little more, more attention to it and not pop and hip hop and all that, mm -hmm. you might be a more recognizable face, but certainly within the genre of music that you have attested to this lifetime you are certainly up there in well the I've top, worked with a lot of famous ranks. people yeah. played with a lot of famous people and then it's so I have some visibility and I transitioned back in 2001 so it's it was a while ago when I transitioned and I think times were a lot different it's it's been really wonderful to see some of the positive changes that have happened right. since then and in, in how the media talks about transgender people and it's still, we still a long way to go. It's not like it's long way to go, but it's you know I, I like that people are getting out of the stigma. Like, look, who cares? That's Jennifer. That's Fred, Jack, whoever else. I don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just treat people the way. Look, that's your name. That's your name. I mean. Well, my hope is that that somehow it all becomes normal and absolutely, and, and people start paying attention to transgender people more for their contributions and what they do and what. What their talents are, as opposed to their what their genitalia it might Absolutely. be, you know, or what their, um, their whether they're a fashion model or an actress, you know, or something. Whether, Absolutely. you know, they're we're a lot deeper than just that. Absolutely, you're a, a musician, which leads me into my next question: How difficult it is is it to play now a bass? I look at the hands of bass <laughs> players, and they are big and long. Those fingers. It's only difficult when you don't practice. But it, but, but it doesn't matter that you're doing it left-handed. I would think left-handed would make it, because everybody doesn't play left-handed. That's how it feels good to me. You know, that's my thing. I, I, I never think of the physicality of it. As you know, long, long as I'm practicing and I, yeah. you know, you, you're, you're sort of an athlete. Can you pick it up and kind of show us? Uh -huh. You don't have to pick it all the way up, but you, you can lift it. Um, you yeah, it. well, voila. There you go. That's... So anyway, it's 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 just a matter of practice. If you don't practice, then I don't sound that right. That looks good. really pretty, by the way. <laughs> so it doesn't matter that you're left-handed. Well, not it to me, you know. I it's but, but but if somebody really then just say I wanted to start saying, look, I'm a I'm going to play the upright bass. Mm -hmm. I know who Jennifer Lightham is, and I'm going to leave a legacy <laughs> behind Jennifer, and I'm going to do it with my left hand. It's hard enough to write with your left hand. There are not that many people that write with their left hand. Well, it all depends on what hand you are. If you're, if you're, uh, uh, actually, I'm ambidextrous, oh. and I play the bass left-handed. Oh, so when you started, when you played, you you initially started playing bass guitar. Is that right? Electric bass. Electric yes. bass guitar. And so I, you switched, and you were playing electric bass guitar with your right hand or your left hand. Left-handed. Okay, so you you oh, oh wow. It just felt good that way. It always felt good that way. And I, I was heavily influenced early on in my life by the Beatles. I mean, the Beatles were a, a big deal when I was in the fourth grade, 1964. You know, and, I like and, that. Uh, She's proud to say that. So I, right. I, I always dug Paul McCartney. I liked his, I liked his playing. I liked his musicianship. And, and um, he played the bass left-handed. And back then, I See, had I no, know that. I had no musical in, influences from my family per se. So I thought basses were played left-handed and guitars were right-handed because of the Beatles. Oh, wow. That was just my own little narrow world there. Wow. Um, but later on, I just it just felt feels good. And frankly, on the bass, I think my actually my right hand's a little stronger than my left hand. I throw a ball better with my right hand. I write with oh, my really? right hand. So you um, do other things with your right hand. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty you are equal. You Yeah, I can throw a ball pretty good with my left hand, too, but I'm I practiced a lot more with my right hand. But I bat left-handed. I play a lot of softball, but um, I find, and, and a lot of um, 
I've talked to a lot of really great famous bass players. Red yeah. Mitchell was one who played the bass right-handed, but he was left-handed. So his stronger hand was on the fingerboard. Oh. And in my case, it's the same, where my stronger hand's on the fingerboard. So I think, in the beginning at least, I had some grip strength there already. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to develop the grip strength quite as much as most people would. Yeah. So I probably, probably progressed a little faster in the beginning uh -huh. because of that. Um, and I, I, you'll find that a lot of the virtuosi, the, the really great bassists that play right-handed are, are left-handed people playing the bass right-handed. See, I would never know that, almost like it crosses from one side to the other, just the way that whole thing works with the polar side of the body. There, there's a really incredible um, classical bass player, um, Edgar Meyer, He's one of the best that's ever played. He's what? just an incredible player. He's like okay. the, the Paganini of the string bass. Okay. And, uh, he and I talked about this one time. He was doing a master class at USC, and I was invited to come down there and be part of it. And and um, he we he talked about right-handed and left-handedness with me, and he said, "You play the bass with both hands. What does it matter if you're playing this way or this way?" You know? I know directional, I would think, but so some people, like you said, that's where you felt comfortable. Yeah, with doing this it. feels good. I've, that's been my whole life. If I, something feels good, I do it. There, there you go. Now, I know there's, there, there's, there's Ron Carter, Oscar Pettiford. Oscar Pettiford's probably my, my favorite. Oscar Pettiford. Now, bass player. out of those two, were, they, were you influenced by them? Heavily. I spelled, Oscar Pettiford was, came before Ron Carter. Ron, uh -huh. I think I would say Ron Carter was influenced by Oscar Pettiford. We all have been influenced. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I touched my microphone okay. there. <laughs> We've all been influenced by Oscar Pettiford. He, he's like one of the fathers of the instrument. Jimmy Blanton before him, and then Oscar Pettiford was a really great all-around musician. He, yeah. he wrote music, he, he, uh, he played cello as well. He would take a cello and tune it like a bass and play real high solos. Yeah. Sound reinforced the bass a lot better now. But back then, he would sit and play cello and play solos on the cello in front of a, a band. There's, wow. a, there's a famous um, recording of Oscar Pettiford playing with the Duke Ellington Orchestra where he's oh, wow. only playing cello. He's in front of the band playing, playing cello. Solos. What's the name of that recording? Can well, there's a, there's one called, he, they play Perdido. You can find it on YouTube, people. Yeah, I think there would be a YouTube of that. I know, I know you can, I think you can download it on iTunes. Too. Yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. The other question is now, how many females do we have that play bass? Upright? Well, a lot more than there used to be. What, how many now? Oh, goodness. I couldn't begin to put a number on So it's a on. lot? It's a yeah, lot. there are quite a few oh, now. Oh, see, I thought there were like one, two, three. No, no. You're talking, what, over 15? Oh, easily, easily. Oh, geez, back you know? when I was playing back in the in the 70s, no other females oh. playing the string bass. Just didn't see it. So see, you've influenced other women without knowing <laughs> I don't know if it's me. I think it's it's just the education programs. I think when symphony orchestras started to audition mm -hmm. with by playing behind a curtain, is when you, you started to see orchestras become in, into you know um, gender wise they got yes. integrated you know, yes, yes. and uh, there were a lot of women playing classical first I think before you started to see a lot of jazz players, but that sort of trickled into the jazz community where. where it suddenly it was not an unfeminine thing to play the string bass, you know. And back when I started, it was unfeminine, and so I, you know, I hid my true gender to be, to be able to have a career. You know? Yeah, well, I'm glad you hid it and stayed <laughs> cooked in until the world caught up with you, okay? Because <laughs> it's the world that has to catch up, not the other way around. Trust mm -hmm. me when I tell you. Anyway, the uh, one uh, other qu quick question: um, I know you've been traveling quite a bit. Um, what are you doing outside of the country? Have you been on touring outside of the country at all? I, yeah, Where I went over to Europe. Um, um, it's been like a year been now since I was over there, but I went to Where France and the Netherlands. And, mm -hmm. um, and how were you received in those oh, places? Oh, just terrific. Amazing, huh? I terrific. you couldn't hear a dime drop, could you? Well, nobody cares over there what my, what your gender is or, or whether so I'm trans or whatever. It's nobody cares. They, they just want to hear you play. It's yeah. the art. They There's respect more, the art. Absolutely. More into the art there. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I final question. <laughs> Hold on, I have to show us what off. you're promoting. It's warm here today. She's got a dab. It's warm in the <laughs> studio, people. <laughs> yes. So, what are you what are you promoting now? Let's just. Well, see. I got the mood switch record, but I'm also this this as we're filming this. It's December. We're just early December here, so I have my future Christmas CD. 
<laughs> oh, that's pretty. Bring it over to your face on a little bit. Oh, uh, you must you have one. <laughs> yes, that's a must-have from Jennifer Lightham. Now, is this in stores now? Um, it's, it's, it's on iTunes. All of my stuff is available from Amazon and also uh -huh. online. As long as you can spell my name, you can find me. L-E-I-T-H-A-M -E is the last name. First that's name correct. is Jennifer, J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R. Yeah. And okay. this record is called Future Christmas, and uh, there's a really good video of Future Christmas, the global warming winter holiday blues. It's oh, the wow. tune I wrote for this, uh -huh. and it's it's sort of a sardonic look at, uh -huh. at global warming through the imagery of the winter holidays. It's pretty funny. And I think it's tragic too. probably going to be sound really, really good as you're, you know, as you're playing along the bass with that global warming. That's, I think that can... Get people a way to hear it and maybe pay a little bit more attention yeah, to it's, music involved. It's you know it's 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 set in the future. It's set about sixty years in the future, and I'm okay. like singing about what the winter holidays have become when there's no wow. where. Okay, everybody, this again is Osiris with fifteen minutes on Good Entertainment Stones of the Cover Blog. Where can we reach you, Miss Jennifer Lightham? www dot www dot Jennifer Lightham dot com. Jennifer Lightham. Dot com. Don't go putting a fancy L I G H T. It is L E I T H A M. Last name, first name, Jennifer. I also have a Facebook fan page. And a Facebook fan page, which is Jennifer Lightham. Jennifer Lightham. Mm -hmm. So if you want to find her on Facebook, Twitter, too? Yeah, I'm on Jennifer Twitter. Jennifer Lightham. Everything is Jennifer Lightham. So whatever <laughs> you do, Google, Twitter, Facebook her. She is the bomb diggity. One of the hottest jazz upright bass players you'll ever hear, ever see. So. Go out and pick up a CD, and that's a wrap.